So finally, just to sum up here and perhaps drive some discussion questions amongst you all, what really should be the goal of serum TSHs for the vast majority of low-risk post-operative di differentiated thyroid cancers? And perhaps we can compare against this evolving concept of active surveillance for some of these low-risk differentiated thyroid cancers. Um, really, what is the cost benefit of, of suppressing a serum TSH? Will they behave naturally um, otherwise as uh, regardless, meaning um, these low-risk thyroid cancers can perhaps be even actively surveyed. Secondly, even if the response to therapy is incomplete, should the TSH really be driven to less than two in some of these older, older patients? And really, who is considered older? That is, of course, up for debate. Next, once we decide on a goal TSH range, how long should it be kept there? And really, there's really, unfortunately, no great data on this um, at, 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 uh, at the moment. However, um, it's important to just highlight the findings of this study that we just presented, that half of the physicians who recommended suppression therapy, especially in these low-risk thyroid cancer patients, reported that they would continue to practice for longer than five years. So is that, is that the right thing to do? And finally, how do we better provide physician reassurance um, against these uh, you know, new and uh, continually updated expert opinion uh, guidelines for the management of these low-risk DTC um, that highly provide physician recurrence that patients tend to do quite well over the long term.